China has identified the cause of a mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. More than three billion people in almost 70 countries and territories have been asked to stay at home. The COVID-19 pandemic challenged the whole world. No matter one's age or nationality, it affected everyone. However, the impact of COVID-19 was not the same for all. The least advantaged sectors such as the poor, the less educated, the elderly, persons with disabilities, and indigenous peoples bore much of the brunt. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted and exacerbated deep-seated economic, social, and political inequalities and cultural inequities. As we traverse the road to recovery, it is crucial to address these inequalities to strengthen the resilience of vulnerable and marginalized groups to future shocks and ensure that no one is left behind as we move forward from this pandemic. Thus, this September, through the observance of the Development Policy Research Month, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, or PIDS, and its partner institutions call on our leaders and policymakers to make social justice the front and center of the post-pandemic recovery plan to accelerate the country's recovery from COVID-19 and prepare for future shocks. In the Philippines, the 1987 Constitution frames the promotion of social justice as a commitment to create equitable economic opportunities. It envisions a nation where all members of society enjoy the same basic rights, liberties, opportunities, and protection. Social justice is also the bedrock of many international declarations in which the Philippines is a signatory, such as the Charter of the United Nations, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Copenhagen Declaration, and the UN Millennium Declaration. It is also enshrined in the country's development blueprints, the Philippine Development Plan, or PDP, and the Ambition Natin 2040. So the annual public policy conference which is the main and culminating activity of the DPRM, we encourage our policymakers, the private sector, research and academic institutions, and civil society to work together in reducing and removing the socioeconomic and political inequalities and cultural inequities that divide us. Applying social justice in our policies, plans, and programs should be premised on a holistic approach that sees the organic and functional interrelationship between and among the different sectors of society. We need to recognize that the inequalities and inequities experienced by our vulnerable and marginalized countrymen affect the whole of society as this hamper the attainment of broad-based, inclusive, and sustainable development. Certain areas are in dire need of reforms using a social justice perspective Foremost is education. Policymakers and education providers must design modes of education delivery that are sensitive to the needs of learners, especially those from low income households, students, regardless of economic status, gender, location, disability, and ethnicity, must have access to quality education. Given the importance of information and communications technology, or ICT, in delivering Delivering education and accessing information, the digital divide must be addressed to ensure that everyone has equal access to learning opportunities and digital resources. To protect subsistence and temporary workers from sudden and extended job disruptions, there is a need to improve the design, targeting, and implementation of social protection programs. Likewise, we need a progressive budgeting process that pushes resources to people and places that need them the most. 
We must also ensure that our public health services are affordable and accessible, especially to vulnerable and marginalized sectors. Policy makers should bet for increased investments in health programs that directly address the needs of the population. It is time for our health care system to adopt a life cycle approach by making quality health care services affordable and accessible to all from birth to old age. Also, we need to protect communities that often endure the damage caused by environmental destruction and climate change. We must avoid activities that harm the environment, violate human rights, and endanger the well-being of vulnerable groups, including cultural minorities. We must ensure that no infrastructure, housing, or development project jeopardizes the health safety, and welfare of communities. Thus, assessing the potential impact of proposed projects is crucial to reduce the likelihood of unintended consequences. Lastly, we must increase the participation of the vulnerable and marginalized sectors in policy discourse and decision-making and make sure their voices are heard. This can be done by strengthening government civil society engagements and intensifying the use of bottom-up approaches. The pursuit of social justice is not easy. It is a long and complex process. But through our united effort and shared responsibility, we can have a society where the country's resources and the fruits of economic growth are equitably shared, where everyone is living with dignity and has access to essential services, where the rights of the poor and vulnerable are upheld, and where the environment is nurtured and protected. For more details about this year's DPRM celebration, including the annual public policy conference, visit the PIDS and DPRM websites and follow us on Facebook.